Bonsoir à tous, bienvenue dans ce nouveau numéro des Incorrectibles, une émission spéciale puisque dédiée à la sortie du film événement Sound of Freedom. Alors pour l'occasion, son réalisateur Alejandro Monteverde a accepté de nous accorder un entretien exclusif juste avant la sortie de son film en France ce mercredi 15 novembre. Alors avant d'en parler avec lui, je vous propose de regarder la bande-annonce. the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of cocaine one time with a child, five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years now. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? Yo creo que rescate a niños, ¿verdad? Puedes ayudar a encontrar mi hermana. Te lo prometo. We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. Which means she'll disappear for good. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What we do? You quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. So at this moment, she could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. She's a major operator. It's all rebel territory. No one goes in. Not the army, not the police, not us. What if this was your daughter? There's no Marine unit coming. You're on your own. This job tears you to pieces. And this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. When God tells you what to do, Voilà donc pour cette bande-annonce. Bonsoir Alejandro Monteverde. Hello. Merci beaucoup de nous recevoir et de nous accorder donc cet entretien exclusif diffusé en simultané sur YouTube, mais également sur Player, donc sur la chaîne Les Incorrectibles Plus. Alors votre film, je le disais, sort ce mercredi 15 novembre en France, après sa sortie aux états unis le 4 juillet dernier, où il a déjoué tous les pronostics et exposé au box-office. À cette heure, il a rapporté plus de 200 millions de dollars de recettes pour un budget de 15 millions de dollars. C'est, je crois, le troisième film le plus rentable de toute l'histoire du cinéma américain. À sa sortie, il avait même devancé euh, les nouveaux volets d'Indiana Jones, c'est de Mission Impossible. Alors, première question, allez, Rondro Monteverde. Euh, D'abord, est-ce que vous attendiez un tel succès Ah, uh, non. Non, il y a eu une surprise surprise. You know, mainly a film, it's a small movie, independent film, to come out against all these big franchise films. Uh, on July 4, which is Independence Day in, in, in the United States. Uh, it's a day that normally independent films don't choose that day. So it was a great surprise to have that box office and to have, you know, more important, the reaction of that strong from the audience. Comment vous expliquez ce succès? I think it, it, it has to do with, uh, uh, in my humble opinion, Um, you know, just like anything else, uh, there was a, a very strong connection between the audience and the film. And that's the most important thing for an independent film, because once there is that connection, then you can start this word of mouth. Uh, we did not have, you know, the marketing dollars that the big studio movies had. So for us, it was really important That, that connection between audience and the film. Alors ce succès, il est d'autant plus impressionnant et inattendu qu'il n'y avait pas eu de promotion exceptionnelle de la part des médias dits mainstream. Alors revenons un petit peu, s'il vous plaît, à la genèse de ce film. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire euh, de quoi traite ce film, euh, selon vous, 
et euh, quels obstacles vous avez dû surmonter pour euh, donc euh, faire ce film Well, the main theme is to explore say a, a subject matter that is very difficult to to talk as a society. Um, it's it deals with child trafficking and uh, child sexual abuse. Um, it's a very difficult theme to explore uh, through the cinematic lens. Um, it's been a taboo, so I I was not aware of the horrors of 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 that theme of 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 of, of what's happening uh, worldwide uh, in terms of child abuse. So around 2016, I saw a news report on on this subject, and it really uh, shook my soul. I I. I, it was like an awakening and I felt I needed to do something. And for me, it, uh, one of the things I could do is write. So I started writing a, a screenplay, um, exploring this theme with my co-writer Rod Barr. And we started with the fiction. You know, we wrote for like around two or three months. Um, and then part of our research, we met uh, Tim Ballard and who he was a former a uh, federal legend working for Homeland, Secur uh, Homeland Security and his job was uh, fighting crimes against children. And when we met and we started talking with him, we realized that, you know, his story was better than our fiction and that's where we did a detour and we started from scratch writing uh, a film based on the story of Tim Ballard. Revenons un petit peu aux obstacles que vous avez dû surmonter pour faire ce film, puisque euh, de ce que j'ai compris, vous avez mis 4 ans donc, pour le faire. Est-ce qu'il y a des sujets tabous Vous disiez que c'était un sujet tabou, mais est-ce qu'il y a des sujets tabous à Hollywood Est-ce que c'est compliqué euh, de monter un film comme celui-là aux États-Unis Oui, je veux dire, c'était très difficile. Ce film avait beaucoup de challenges. Et la première fois, c'était comment write a screenplay and make a movie that audiences want to watch and make a film that, you know, the audience can digest. And the second great challenge in here, like in any other independent film, is how to get the funds, to raise the funds uh, to make a film. And in this case, you know, we had a big obstacle, which is that this theme is not, uh, or we thought that it was not uh, very marketable and very commercial. So um, I was also very surprised to see the support from uh, all our, our investors. Um, also how they all came together because the investors on this film, they're all from different backgrounds, politically and also from different countries. So uh, it was challenge after challenge, but the most important thing was to make a film that audiences can actually enjoy. Even though it's a very difficult subject matter, uh, we wanted to create an, an, a cinematic odyssey into the heart of darkness, but through the lens of hope. So when the film finish, it leaves the audience in a state of reflection and inspired to be part of this uh, important dialogue. It's, uh, it started, we wanted to, uh, the motive to make this film was just very pure, very simple was to make a film so we can create uh, a space to discuss and create a social dialogue that now, thanks to the success of the box office, now has become an international uh, dialogue. Alejandro Monteverde, avant sa sortie en France, votre film n'échappe pas aux critiques. Il est accusé de, de complotisme et il y a des critiques assez virulentes, pour ne pas dire très virulentes, de la part de beaucoup de médias mainstream en France. Euh, comment euh, vous expliquez ces critiques Comment vous y répondez Et puis, est-ce que vous pouvez nous rappeler justement qui a financé ce film So, you know, uh, I was very surprised about these labels. I think one of the most dangerous things that we can do to each other as human beings is to label each other and to label uh, people's work. Uh, it's very dangerous, more dangerous when the label is incorrect. And in the beginning of the film, yes, the, the, the film started to be attacked and being labeled uh, by the big networks. And, you know, there was kind of like a certain type of bullying because 
you know, we're just a small independent uh, film. And these labels were uh, incorrect for the most part. Um, and the, the labels continue to change throughout. Uh, every week was a different label. Uh, in the beginning, they were saying that this film, you know, was made for a conspiracy group and so on. Well, I wrote the movie uh, in 2016. I don't think these conspiracy groups existed in that at that time, uh, to my knowledge. I was not even aware, and I'm still not aware of them. I don't know anything about these conspiracy groups. I don't know anybody that uh, belongs to them. I don't know how big they are. I don't know if there's five people, 10,000 people, but I do know one thing. Around 20 million people saw the film, and I do think that that proves that those labels were wrong because that transcends all the political spectrum and all these uh, labels. Uh, there were labels also that this movie was funded by some people in these groups. And that also for me, there's lack of, of professionalism from the journalists, because if you look at the movie, you will see the names of the families that funded this film. And these are big profile families, big names. Uh, uh, you can just watch the movie. I would not want to mention a name because then I will exclude other names because there, there were a large group of different people, but they were all very uh, high profile people, people, last names that you will recognize uh, very easily. Uh, so it's, it answers the question in there as well. And, you know, it goes, it goes against the motive of the film. We just wanted to make a movie to create a conversation about this taboo, you know. Um, you know, one of the very uh, interesting things is also they were saying, well, this thing is it's conspiracy, there's not really happening. I wish they were right. Uh, that would be a great celebration if the, the abuse of children is not happening. But what the, was the contradiction is in, in the same uh, uh, news uh, uh, place, they, in one part, they were attacking the film, and the other one, they were reporting a big sting operation that was around the world uh, that stopped uh, this, this, this pedophile ring uh, of around 100. I think 70 were in the U.S., and they rescued, uh, you know, 12 or 13 children. Um, so it was, like, really uh, surreal, because in one part, they were attacking the film, and the other one, they were reporting a case that was, in a way, bigger than what I was putting on the film. So uh, it, it was shocking, but then, you know, uh, there is nothing I can do. There's nothing, you know, when I, I believe if you can control uh, things, you just have to let them go. But what was very uh, ratified, and I was very grateful, is that the audience is the one that came out to defend the film, to deactivate all these prejudices and all these accusations that they were going against the film because people were watching the film and they're like, you know, everything, these articles that are attacking this film, I, I'm not seeing in, 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 in the film. So I, I, I've, I've think that it's also very dangerous, this collective opinion that happened on, not an, I don't want to generalize, uh, ge generalized, uh, there were some good uh, reporters, good journalists that, that took their time to do uh, a deep research. But it's just dangerous when people create an opinion based on uh, an article that they read and then they come to see the film already with the prejudices and they come almost not liking the movie before they even saw it, you know. But at the end, again, uh, I make movies, and I think all filmmakers, for the most part, I believe, we make movies for the audience, and I'm just very grateful that the audience came out and, and defended the film, because otherwise we would not have been able to survive. Vous parliez des noms au générique de ce film, il y en a un qui nous a marqué, celui de Mel Gibson. Quel a été le rôle de Mel Gibson dans ce film? You know, I'm a big fan of Mel Gibson as a director. He's one of the greatest directors. Uh, I love cinema. I watch, I consume a lot of uh, cinema. And, you know, uh, like any other film, um, they, when you finish the film, they always tell you, hey, you got to take 10 minutes out. And that's how it started. I approached Jim Caviezel to ask if I could get the help of, of a master like, like uh, Mel Gibson to 
watch the movie with me and to see where we could uh, trim, take out 10 minutes. And that's where the uh, friendship began. And then we started, uh, uh, we were very grateful for his support on the film. On parlait tout à l'heure des obstacles que ce film avait rencontrés. Est-ce que vous pensez que vous perturbez un certain lobby euh, aux États-Unis à Hollywood? I don't know. I don't like to take myself too serious of, or, or the film or give too much credit. You know, I'm just a, a filmmaker. Uh, I, I am not an expert on any uh, subject. I, I like, just like any other filmmaker, I, I, I make this movie, I don't know, uh, I shot it in 2018, I finished it in 2019. And then the movie was lost in the limbo for 40 years. Uh, after that, I, I move on into other projects. I wrote all the screenplays. I shot another film. Right now, I am uh, pre-producing uh, uh, on production on another film. So, you know, I didn't think this film was at one point. I, I, I have to say that I, you know, uh, thought that the film was never going to see the, 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 the light of the day. And so, you know, I do think that the film did reveal that there is a hunger for other kinds of films. You know, I do think that that's great to uh, open up again the door for independent films. You know, there were each year I started to see less independent films in, in, in the big screen. And I hope that, you know, this film, you know, helps to kind of Uh, open the door for other filmmakers and other independent films to, to, uh, to support this, this kind of cinema. Lors de l'avant-première française de ce film, vous avez euh, pu être le témoin d'une immense standing ovation. Euh, ça a dû vous toucher. Est-ce que vous attendiez un tel accueil de la part des Français euh, Comment vous avez réagi Pour moi, c'est mon plus grand award. You know? La réponse de l'audience, surtout avec ce film, parce que you know getting all these attacks is very refreshing to go and to really receive the the applause and the recognition and the appreciation of of the audiences for the film and that is really touching and that for me it's the the glory of of making movies is to see a reaction like yesterday's and that has been the reaction around the world um It, and, and, and I really believe that the, the applause and the standing ovations that the film continuously receives, I don't think it's to the, to the filmmakers because I've seen that happen uh, on theaters where they don't know I'm there. You know, I go incognito when the movie was out in theaters and at the end of the film, people would stand up and clap. And I think uh, they, they, they're celebrating you know, a film that, that had the courage to, to explore this, this theme that we were all aware, but, you know, we were trying to avoid talking about things like this. You know, in every screening that I have done so far, there is always one or two people from the audience that approach me and open up about their story that, you know, they were victims of any type of child abuse, uh, that they were molested when they were kids and so on. And, You know, for me, you know, I'm honored that they share those stories, but at the same time, you know, I am no expert, I'm no psychology, I'm just a filmmaker. So, uh, but it, it, it does, it's inspired to see how people are opening up and, and bringing a, a, a difficult conversation into the table. And now it has become, I could say maybe some kind of a movement uh, in terms of this, this international social dialogue that is happening as a community. Alors, lors de cette avant-première, vous avez présenté votre distributeur en soulignant le courage qu'il avait distribué à un tel film. D'abord, là aussi, vous avez eu du mal à trouver un distributeur en France, je suppose, en Europe. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en parler et puis nous parler aussi du rôle d'un certain Carl Zero euh, Quel a été le rôle de Carl Zero, qui est très, très populaire en France sur cette question, justement uh, Yes, four years, the movie was without a distributor, without a partner. And I, I, the film was an orphan film. And um, the dream was to have somebody bet on the movie. And this distribution company, Angel Studios, came in and, and I, I say that they rescued the film. And they not only told me that they understood the film, but they knew how to market the film. They were, had a very clear uh, way to market this film. And I, I feel that 
you know, this film was possible by people that had the courage to invest in the film, by people that had the courage to be part of the film all the way from the cast to all the filmmakers, all the people that worked on the film. And to be able to have the courage to come out in the summer, that, uh, it's very brave. I even, when they told me that they, they chose July 4 to come out in theaters, I, I, I was like, wow, that's, that might be the end of this film. We may be one day in theaters and we're, we're out. Uh, we started with a small amount of theaters and then we started to grow. Um, so that same thing happened around the world. You know, a lot of distributors were hesitant to, uh, you know, distribute this film. And I'm just very grateful for every distributor that picked the film in every different country. Uh, uh, like I said yesterday, uh, I'm very, very, um, um, you know, grateful to Herbert and to to the French distribution company that that took this film. And and I was very excited yesterday to see the reaction of the film. And to be, you know, I I I I think this is my first time in 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 Paris that I come in with a film uh, or or film of my work. Uh, I know my my last film. I uh, also got distribution here, but I was unable to, to come. But it was just very exciting to, to be here and I getting to know uh, a lot of new people. And I was also, you know, very uh, glad to see that there is people in France uh, aware of the problem and, and that there is these organizations uh, that are, you know, when that are fighting, uh, that are, you know, coming together to fight this, 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 this crime. Um, so, just grateful. Et sur le rôle de, de Carl Zero, vous le connaissiez? Yeah, I will. I'm very honored to have, uh, you know, a person like Carl Zero to have his support and to have his voice, uh, you know, help promote this film. I was very honored to uh, that we did this uh, Q um, Q&A yesterday after the film, and you know, it's thanks to people like him that help promote this film and create this this wave, this this word of mouth. And I'm just grateful for all the supporters. And I just hope that that France and the audience of France gives an opportunity to the film, that people come and, and, and support the film and ignore any kind of noise or, or, or prejudice that is created by by this collective opinion that has in many ways built around the film. Alors, Alejandro Monteverde, en dépit des critiques de Libération, de Télérama, ce film, il s'annonce comme un immense succès aussi en France. Il va être distribué dans près de 500 salles, donc on ne doute pas qu'il va aussi rencontrer un public immense. Euh, revenons justement un petit peu au film lui-même. Comment est-ce que vous avez choisi ces acteurs qui sont exceptionnels You know, one thing about this film, even though it sounds like a cliché, uh, I didn't pick this film. I didn't wake up one day and say, I want to make a movie about child trafficking or, you know, child abuse. It's almost like the film found me and the subject matter found me and kind of knocked on, on my door. And the film kind of took a, took a, uh, kind of like a voice for itself. You know, it became a, an, a, its own energy. And I feel like the film pick and cast it, uh, Jim Caviezel, Bill Camp, uh, And I tell you why, you know, when we started the process of, of casting and making offers, you know, you, you have your wish list. And at one point you make offers and, you know, there's always uh, more when it's an independent film, you know, you don't have the funds or actors are not available. Or in this case, you know, the subject matter is a very difficult one. And obviously actors don't want to be part of films that nobody sees, right? So. Uh, the way Jim Caviezel came, you know, we started talking. I already had made a, uh, a handful of offers to other actors that for many reasons could not do the, the, the film. And uh, Tim Ballard himself said, well, what about Jim Caviezel? And my first question to him, I said, well, why you want Jim Caviezel? First, he doesn't look like you. Uh, he's tall, he's dark hair. And for me, it's important. It's a biopic that the actor looks like you. And he said to me, because it requires a lot of faith to do this job. You know, you have to see thousands of hours of child 
of used material and transcribe it because you cannot play these videos in court. You have to describe it in detail and that really messes you up in your psychology. And, you know, Jim is a man, a man of faith. So, I th you know, for me, I, I was open to anything. I was opening to listening to the film. I think it was uh, Cindy Lumet that said, uh, sometimes you have to not get in the way of your film and you have to identify. And I kind of saw that this film was kind of having its own, you know, its own energy. So I went and meet with Jim Cabezal and right away I saw how personal and how familiar he was with this subject matter. Uh, within, I think within minutes, I saw a tear in his eye. Uh, he shared with me that he had uh, adopted three children from China and I saw his conviction and how deeply he was involved in how much he knew about this subject. And for me as a director to work with an actor that cares and is so involved and understands this subject, uh, maybe more than the filmmaker himself, I think it's just very valuable. So my next question was like, can I dye your hair blonde uh, tomorrow? And he said, yes, so we did it. And it was a surprise. We shaved his beard, we dyed his hair blonde, and Tim Ballard came, and when we saw him side to side, the resemblance was incredible. It was like a transformation. I was like, Jim Caviezel turned into Tim. Even his, his eyes became bluer because of the reflection of his blonde hair. Um, and I've always been a fan of, of Jim Caviezel. One of my favorite films is The Thin Red Line. Uh, I, I love the work he did on the Mel Gibson film, The Passion. Um, so for me, it was a great honor. And he is one of the most professional actors I've ever worked with. Um, I don't know, have you seen, oh, you saw the film yesterday. You see the scene where he has a bucket. So there's a great story behind that. Uh, you know, that location, we only had it for one day and you paid. And if you don't shoot, that's it. You lose the money and you lose the day. You know, we were shooting six days a week. We didn't have the funds to add any other day. So that day, Jim Caviezel doesn't show up on set. And I say, where is Jim? And they say, uh, we're taking him to the hospital. I say, why? So he's really, really sick. Then he has food poisoning. I say, don't take him to the hospital. Let me, let me talk to him first. So I went to his uh, uh, hotel. And I said, hey, Jim, it's really important. If we lose this day, we, we won't have this scene. If we don't have this scene, we may not have a movie, which is, you know, we don't have the days, we don't have the resources. I said, I will, I will re rewrite the scene and I'll make you like your hangover. I'll make you pretty much like you're sick in the film. And if you throw up on camera, it will work. Uh, but I need you, I just need an hour or two. I'll just, I'll just be very effective on my shooting. I'll, I'll take one or two takes per, 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 per scene. And, he said, that's his conviction. He says, let's do it. And he came with a bucket. He could barely walk. He would like slump on the, on the, you know, how he sits on the chair. That's all real. He is genuinely sick. When we would say cut, they would pick him up and put him on a bed. And then he just was arrested. And then, and then there was a doctor just in case. We shoot another. We took just, I think we did only an hour or two. And then, uh, then he left. So, that I value tremendously, and I'm just uh, very grateful to have worked with him. Un mot de la performance des acteurs enfants qui sont absolument exceptionnels. Yeah, working with children is always very uh, difficult because they're children, and uh, but they're also there's something magical because they are the masters of being in the present. You know, we adults always are thinking, and we're not fully here, and. You know, one of the ways that I work with the kids uh, that it kind of complemented each other is the less the kid knows about what the film is about, the more present they are because they're not thinking uh, when they're really young. And so in this case, that's, that was a good way to protect him uh, psychologically about the darkness of the theme uh, of the film. And the girl that plays Rocio, she was a professional actress. She was, she's been, most of the actors in the film, the kids, were the first time uh, acting, you know, first time in front of a camera, except Rocio. The, the, uh, her name is Cristal, incredible actress, but she's, she's a trained actress. And I worked a lot with her parents, you know, uh, particularly on this film. Um, it was up to the parents if they wanted to tell 
their children what the film was about. And uh, I think uh, uh, that was a, a very uh, great way to keep the children safe. On va arriver bientôt au terme de cet entretien. Alejandro, est-ce que euh, vous avez euh, peur des représailles Puisque ce film, on le rappelle, est tiré d'une histoire vraie. On suppose que ce n'est pas facile de faire un film sur ce sujet. I mean, I just think... Uh, est-ce que c'est dangereux Is it dangerous You know, uh, I hope not. Uh, I pray that, that, you know, I'm just an artist. I, I am not a politician. I'm not part of any... Uh, I don't belong to any organization or anything. I'm just a storyteller and I, I, for me it was important to, to uh, this is the kind of movies that I like to make. I like to make movies that begin when the movie ends, that, that, that leaves audiences in a state of reflection. And, and you know, there was one movie that, that had a great impact in me, which is Chindra's List. Uh, I was in film school when I saw the film and when I walked out of the film, I say, that's the kind of cinema I want to make. So, Yes, I, I'm attracted to, to, to stories that, you know, could be controversial sometimes, but I just hope that, yes, that we are, you know, that artists and filmmakers are never in danger for, you know, and journalists for, you know, exploring any given theme. So uh, uh, I, I, I try not to think about it and I try just to keep myself busy and, and working on the next film, you know. Alors justement, vous travaillez, vous le disiez, vous avez tourné un autre film depuis donc ce film a connu un, un immense succès mondial. C'est quoi donc ce nouveau film sur lequel vous travaillez I'm very excited about the film. Uh, uh, I don't think that can be put into any label because it's it's again it's a universal theme. It's a a film that uh, is based on a true story about a woman, an immigrant woman that uh, writes to New York and literally revolutionizes New York in the late 1800s. Uh, she builds an empire as big as the Rockefellers or the Vanderbilts, but it's an empire of hope. All the resources go back into the streets to help the children that were dying in the streets, the children of the immigrant. Uh, I'm very proud of the film. I, I, I really excited about the release. It comes out in, uh, in cinemas uh, on Uh, March 8, which is International Women's Day. And it's a film that celebrates the power of a woman. This is a woman that had to face all... Uh, in, the antagonist in the film are, is institutional. It's all these institutions that were ran by men. And she had constantly had to face and fight for, for social justice, um, uh, for the immigrant and, and, and those uh, people without the dignity. So very, very excited about the film and also uh, the way, uh, very excited of the cinematic approach that we gave to that story. It's like a dance between the camera and, and the characters. Uh, it's shot in a, in a very different way that I've shot any other film. Um, um, this is like, a, in many ways, it's a, a homage to Andrei Tarkovsky uh, on the way the, 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 the film is choreographed and, and you know, the tone and the style of the film, I'm just excited to share with, with audiences. So I think it's coming out worldwide uh, on the same day, uh, uh, in the US and uh, Europe. On sait qu'à Hollywood, ce qui compte avant tout, c'est l'argent. Donc est-ce que maintenant que vous êtes un réalisateur bankable, plus que bankable, est-ce que le système vous appelle et, et vous demande de faire des films? I'm very attracted to stories. So, you know, for me, more than getting calls, I'm more excited about, you know, getting the opportunity to make the movies that I've been writing. You know, I, I call myself a writer and a director. I, I write more than I direct because for writing, you don't need big budgets, right? So I have a lot of uh, projects that I have developed on themes that are very important to me that I'm very passionate about. So um, I do think that the, the, this film has built a, uh, an audience uh, at the international level. And I'm hoping to continue to grow that audience so uh, I can continue to, to make films that, that are important uh, to me and I hope that it's also important to, to audiences. But I would love to, to uh, also one day work with, with one of the big studios and, and um, I'm just open to, uh, 
to, I just love cinema. I, I, I like to make uh, films and, and I, if it was up to me, uh, I would be living on a set just shooting all day long. Vous l'avez rappelé, vous êtes auteur, réalisateur, scénariste de ce film. D'ailleurs, moi, pour ma part, j'ai vraiment été très sensible à la lumière du film que je trouve absolument sublime. C'est véritablement chaque plan, je trouve une œuvre d'art. Est-ce euh, qu'il y a des, des acteurs, euh, entre guillemets, du système avec lesquels vous aimeriez plus particulièrement tourner, que ce soit des acteurs américains ou peut-être même euh, français Yes, I mean, I, there's, I, I, I'm a big fan of, of many, many actors, but I always liked, to me, casting is one of the most important process of directing a film. Um, and I liked when I, every film um, needs to ask, cast, the film needs to cast and pick the actors. Uh, I'm working on a film, right? well, the movie that I just finished that is coming out in theaters on March 8th. Uh, I work with this actress that is amazing. I think she should be nominated for an Oscar. Her name is Christiana Delana. I think uh, she did an incredible job in this film. Um, and it was an honor to be working with her. Uh, and that was, you know, we, the movie found her and it was a, a delight to work with her. And, and also uh, the film has a great cast, John Lithgow, uh, uh, David Morse, incredible actor and a very, uh, a uh, great actor from uh, uh, it Italy, uh, Giancarlo Giannini. And, but the film I'm working right now, um, it's a really different kind of film because I'm shooting in another language. I'm sh well, Cabrini is half in Italian, but this film I'm shooting, uh, I'm shooting in Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, and I want to go and find, uh, discover uh, the lead actress. Uh, in, in Israel. I, I, I'm, I'm really um, very excited about that part of the casting. And there is uh, other roles that I have other people in mind that I can share, but there's, those are some of my favorite actors uh, that I would love to, to work with. Um, um, I'll, I'll give you one that I uh, hope he says yes, uh, Benicio El Toro. Uh, be great to hear him perform in Hebrew. Um, so it's 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 a fascinating journey to to make a movie because uh, I th it's it's when there's so many things that need to come together. This film that I'm uh, in pre-production right now, it's I've been working on it for 12 years, 12 years, 12 years writing the screenplay, and finally. Uh, thanks to the success of, of this film, we were able to, to get the funds and, and get the movie going. And I hope that, you know, Cabrini is as, is as successful as, as Son of Freedom. I'm very excited about Cabrini coming out. Merci beaucoup. Alejandro Monteverde d'avoir accepté donc euh, cette interview euh, exclusive donc pour les incorrectibles. Donc on rappelle à tous ceux qui nous regardent que ce film sort euh, ce mercredi 15 novembre dans près de 500 salles en France. On vous souhaite euh, tout le succès, le même succès que celui qu'il a connu aux états unis cest c'est-à-dire un véritable carton. On se retrouve quant à nous très rapidement pour un nouveau numéro des incorrectibles. Bye bye.